All I'm going to tell you is non-controversial, all of it's simple physics. Sea level will rise. Food is an issue. We'll have to move where we grow food because water precipitation patterns are changing. Water in the West is going to be a big, big problem. And this one really kills me, species extinctions. I mean, we, we are in the midst of the, of the next great extinction on this planet, and we're not doing a damn thing about it. And we don't seem to be too bent out of shape about it either. Greenland is melting and will continue to melt beyond what we actually expected. If we're talking about receding glaciers, I mean, that actually might have direct effect on pikas. The neat thing about that is that's exactly what affects us here, humans in the West, most directly. Their story may be our story. The gap between what the public knows about climate change and what the public needs to know about climate change is vast. And anything we can do to narrow that uh, is significant and important. I think that it's actually going to take a generational change to come up with a, a climate literate uh, and energy aware generation that can really tackle these problems and, and make the commitment that needs to happen. When you use fear as a tactic to uh, alert people, um, it can be, it can backfire because people can actually turn off to the issue. They can actually get angry, <coughs> they can get apathetic. Why is it that so many people know we're facing multiple environmental crises, not just climate change, um, and so few people are actually doing anything about it? To have any kind of effective action, you have to have a combination of cognition and affect working together, which is essentially, it's your mind and your heart, your intellect and your emotions. I think that uh, scientists and artists, you know, they're asking very similar questions to a certain extent um, about um, what's going on and why. I think it makes it easy to, one, collaborate with scientists and use science as fodder for art. It's finding a way to tell a story so that you can, um, so that you can tell deeper issues that people might not read about otherwise. So, you know, when we, when we hiked the Appalachian Trail, we were doing stories about sprawl, we were doing stories about endangered species, we were doing all kinds of other stories. And lots of people were reading these stories who would never have touched on those subjects. It's just, I think what you guys are doing is really, really important and valuable. Because one of the number one um, environmental inf information sources for children and youth was television and videos and, tel you know, um, movies. Doing work in film, I commend you all for taking this on. I mean, it seems to me that you'll be taking this challenge of translation seriously. Thinking of mobilizing metaphors, analogies to help communicate these issues. We think that if we just put out a results that people will understand them as they should. But it's incumbent, particularly in this day and age, to consider this uh, careful consideration of how to translate your work in effective ways, maybe around the Thanksgiving table, as a fabric of one's academic obligation rather than an afterthought. As a filmmaker, I think it's definitely an interesting subject to explore because you don't really see a lot of films that are effective dealing with the environment and global warming. The storytelling process is actually much harder than I anticipated. It definitely takes a lot more time to make a movie than I thought it would. Until like those story workshop things that we had to do, I never really thought about like my stories before I started making movies. I think in terms of storytelling, I've learned about you know making sure that you have a message at the very end of your story that you really want to get across, and having that clear the entire time. I think it helped a lot. Like I, you know, was able to formulate the ideas better before I started filming. You're just constantly learning as you edit and filming. Like you always realize you wish you had this clip, or you wish this one was better, or you wish the sound was better. So it just you, you feel like you're never fulfilled, and you always want to do it again. I have learned a lot about filmmaking, but I think the biggest thing I've learned has definitely been about climate change and global warming. My views about climate change have changed dramatically because of this class. I, I mean, coming into the class, I thought climate change, yeah, it's happening. I don't really know what it's going to do. I learned that, like, the little things that we do all the time really, like, you know, they're important and, like, we shouldn't, like, stop doing them, but they're really not exactly what needs to happen. Like, we need to really expand on that and make some serious big picture changes. I think the biggest takeaway point about climate change for me is um, the impact it's going to have on certain areas and how unequal that will be. People with resources are going to be able to adapt to climate change a lot more readily than folks without access to resources.
the luxury of working very closely with 10 students and tracking their growth as individuals has just been unparalleled. We're so proud of them, we're so impressed by what they did. I've learned a lot about effective teaching styles and effective learning styles that uh, has, has just been amazing. Being a good storyteller definitely makes you a more effective and probably a more famous and prolific scientist because you can get more people to listen to what your message is. It's been a lot of fun watching these students. They're very passionate about this issue. They're very curious about it and they're passionate about making movies and telling stories and being good filmmakers. Who's your favorite instructor of the three? You have to pick one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> a lot of students didn't really know that much about filmmaking beforehand, so it's been cool to watch everyone sort of learn and I've been really impressed with how everyone's developed and like seems that everyone has been really interested in the class and wanted to learn more. We always find ourselves looking for more time at the end of class rather than trying to pack up and get. You know, when one person has an expertise in one area and another has one in another, then you can just all collaborate. Everyone's from different majors and has different backgrounds, but it's really fun to see everyone coming together. I've worked in newsrooms all my life, and uh, I really wanted to explore visual communication and storytelling with people that weren't journalists, with kind of real people. And so uh, this has been just a super fun class, and uh, I really liked the, the way everybody explored their ideas and how much enthusiasm there was. It's awesome. It's been a lot of fun, and this semester flew by because of it. <laughs> it's a completely unique class. It's unlike anything I've ever taken before. I'm actually considering if it's offered again, taking it again, because I definitely think I can make two new movies or three new movies. Take this class. <laughs>